Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all who are watching online. It's so good to have you with us. I expected four or five, so it's so good to see all of you. Now, one of my favorite traditions that we do here at St. Mark's is when a member is 90 or older, we sing happy birthday. And not only is this person 90 years old at their next birthday, but their birthday is today. And so Mary McGee is not with us. Mary's not here, right? I think she's with family, but I know that she is watching. So if we can sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy I know at least a couple of you said happy birthday, Mary and Jesus, so that's good. That's good. Friends, let us begin our worship together. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. God is still speaking. Yes, our call to worship, glory to God in the highest and hope to every discouraged heart. Glory to God in the highest and peace to every conflicted soul. Glory to God in the highest, and joy to every downcast spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and love to everyone. Let us sing praises to our God. Let us offer this light against the darkness. Amen.
May be seated. Let us begin in prayer. Holy God of love, there is light in our lives because of the abundance of your steadfast love. A love so vast, so deep, so real that you became one of us. May we live within the power of this love. And may we share its light with a world where too many dwell in darkness. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth, shout together for joy, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. You may remain seated as we sing, O come all ye faithful. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
98th Psalm. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Friends, let us sing again, angels from the realms of glory. You may again remain seated, verses 1, 2, and 4. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is far more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels wines and servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, 
and your years will never end. I wandered out under the sky, how Jesus, our Savior, did come for to die, for poor only people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. in a cow stall with wise men and farmers and shepherds and all but high from God's heaven a star's light did fall the promise of ages It then did recall. If Jesus had wanted for any star in the sky or a bird on the wing or all of God's angels in heaven for to sing he surely could have it for he was the I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus, our Savior, did come for to die for poor only people like you and like I. I wonder as I wonder Thank you, John. Friends, let us gather our hearts together in prayer. When all of time is crushed into a few moments on the edge of everything, teetering on the brink of a new belief in the future, here is where we meet you, O oh God. 
In the last moments of darkness, before the breaking of the light, the cry of a woman and the birth of love, here is where we meet you, O oh God. As silence deepens and the wonder stretches and the ancient past becomes our longed-for future, and the word of the prophet slip into fulfillment, here is where we meet you, O oh God. Creating God, hold this moment made of every time. May we breathe along with all those who have been here before. With a heartbeat of hope, know this is the moment so full of expectations, is as sacred as they get. For contained here is all the hope of the future and the fulfilling of ancient longing. In the snarl of silence, as the universe bends with the weight of anticipation, where the worry is greatest and the moment most urgent, here is where we meet you, O oh God, in flesh. Dear Lord, hear all of these prayers that we raise to you in silence, all of these things that are known only to you and to us. God, we trust that you hear these prayers, that you know these things that we say to you. Bring us comfort in gathering here as your people. And so hear our prayers. We lift to you in one voice the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please let us join together in hymn 134, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. at the calendar and knowing for a while that Christmas Day was going to be on a Sunday, thought about what we could do during this time. 
It's not about making Ken preach. But Ken is on his way home to see family this morning, probably listening to us on the way. But I had a story that I wanted to share with you, and this seemed like a good opportunity to do that. This is a story by Edward Hayes in a book called The Christmas Eve Storyteller. This is The Seventh Yarn, The Heart House. It begins as all good stories do. Once upon a time, there was a house shaped exactly like a human heart. It was two stories high and had a brick chimney. The heart house also had a large front door, but the door had no knob on the outside and could only be opened from the inside. The heart house only opened its door on certain rare occasions to let someone in. This fact shouldn't be too surprising, however, since it was an ordinary heart house and didn't have a lot of room inside. Birthdays and anniversaries were special days during the year when the heart house opened its front door, but they were nothing at all compared to what happened on December 25th. With a cheery Merry Christmas, the door would swing wide open and out would come a shower of beautifully wrapped gifts. The flood of gifts would delight the friends of the heart house and cause it to hop up and down with pride and joy. Yet each time that the door would suddenly open for gifts to pour out, the heart house always closed it again, quickly. This was a good habit it had learned as a child from its parents. Don't leave your front door open, dear, they had warned frequently. Who knows what kind of person or thing might wander in. Although it was located on a nice street in a lovely part of town, the Hart House wasn't happy. It did enjoy wrapping presents and giving gifts, but the joy didn't last. Longing for fulfillment, the Hart House had attended all kinds of workshops and seminars on happiness. It had even taken a three-week course called the Open Door Movement. While it had learned a lot of techniques on how to open one's door more often, how to have a pleasant threshold, the Hart House found that childhood patterns are difficult to break. As a result, except for the gift-giving times, the Hart House kept its front door securely closed. This house rule was especially true, true in the case of visitors who appeared uncouth, who looked like they might track in mud on the rugs, or swing from the drapes. The most impolite were guests who rearranged furniture without even asking permission. The Hart House loved a well-ordered, neat, clean house with everything in its proper place. When it heard someone knocking at its door, the Hart would peek out of a single small upstairs window to see who was down below. If the visitor had muddy feet or appeared to be the type that liked to rearrange furniture, the Hart pretended not to be at home. The weeks just before Christmas were especially busy for the Hart House. Christmas gift catalogs had to be read and visits made to shops and stores. The Hart House found it great fun to shop for gifts to wrap them in colorful paper. Now, one night, less than a week before Christmas, as the snow lay deep on the earth and the full moon ice skated on top of the snowdrifts, A knock came at the front door of the heart house. Go away, said the heart house. I'm busy wrapping Christmas presents. Again, there was a knock, this time louder than before. Who's there, asked the heart house. No reply came, only a much larger knock. So the heart looked out the small upstairs window to see who was at its front door. Wonder of wonders, it was a little elf. From the heart's point of view, however, it was a very large elf, much too large to let inside. What do you want? asked the heart house from the small upstairs window. I'm with the Santa Claus group, but I got separated from the others at the last rest stop. When I came out of the restroom, the sleigh, reindeer, elf helper, Santa, the whole show had left without me. I realized that I'm not one of the important elves. I guess they just didn't miss me. 
I've been walking for miles and it's cold out here. I saw the smoke rising from your chimney and it looked warm inside. Could I come in and warm myself by your fire? You're too big for my little heart house. Besides, you look like the type that likes to rearrange furniture. Oh no, never, replied the elf. I'm not that kind of person. And I don't have muddy feet either. I know that you're not a large heart house and that there's not room for all of me inside, but couldn't I at least put my feet inside to get my toes warm? A long pause followed this request as the heart was in inner turmoil about whether to let someone potentially dangerous inside. Finally, opening its front door, it said, well, all right, you can put your feet inside but I don't have time to visit. I'm far too busy wrapping gifts for Christmas. I'll only warm my toes, said the elf, sliding his long legs inside the house until his toes were up against the old wood-burning stove. Ah, that feels wonderful. The heart house made no reply, but only hummed a Christmas song as it prepared for its big giveaway on December 25th. Beautiful gifts, said the elf, looks expensive. Yes, they are beautiful and some are expensive. I like to give the biggest and best that I can, replied the heart house. Would you like to give the best gift in all the world, the most adventuresome and exciting of all gifts? Asked the elf with a big grin. I've been to every shopping mall in town, to every gift shop and department store, but I've never gift, seen a gift that sounds that special. Tell me, what is it? Give away your front door. What? Are you crazy? My front door? Yes. Tear it off its hinges. Not only is it the best gift in the world, it's the secret of Christmas. Gift giving implies being willing to receive as well as give. Gifts change people, but most folks don't like to be changed by others. It feels good to see others influenced by your gifts, but most people don't like to be changed themselves. Your front door swings outward in giving, but you prevent gifts from coming to you by closing your door right after you've given your gifts. Christmas is a risky time if you're open to receiving gifts as much as giving them. But if I no longer have a front door, then... Yes, I realize there's a danger. People can come in and rearrange your furniture, make your life difficult and even more different. If you can take the risk, however, then you will never become an old house. By staying open to being changed, you will be gifted with countless new ideas and untold possibilities. The elf turned his head slightly and listened. Hear what I hear? The heart house listened too. On the crisp night air, far off in the distance, he could hear jingles, jingling of sleigh bells. It grew louder until suddenly there was a pawing of hoofs and sleigh runners screeching to a stop on the roof of the heart house. Ah, looks like I've been missed, said the elf with a laugh. Merry Christmas and thanks for letting me warm my toes while Santa and the gang returned to find me. Three days later on Christmas, the heart house rang out a loud Merry Christmas. Then with great apprehension, it tore off its front door and gave it away. It was the best gift it had ever given and one that certainly changed its life. From that Christmas day on, the heart house grew larger and larger until it became the biggest and happiest heart house in all the land. Merry Christmas. Friend
I want to invite you as you are able in body and in spirit to stand at our reading of the gospel lesson. The Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory and the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, let us sing joy to the world together.
child our benediction. Our Savior born, a seed planted, roots driven into the earth, soil quakes. A mighty tree shoots toward the heavens, branches sprout, extending hands of praise, leaves flower, shouting glory and grace. The family tree made simple, singular, all-encompassing, perfect. God the Father, we the family, brothers and sisters, the seed has been planted and we are one. Hallelujah. Amen. Merry Christmas. Thank you. 